Today I'm bundling up things that I think belong together if the tracking is accurate or the description on the package. So I'm going to open things up in groups, that makes sense, and it's things I need soon for projects. And these are both USB-C related. These are just PCB connectors for a USB-C receptacle. I have something I'm working on soon. And so instead of the USB mini or micro, I'm trying to switch over to USB-C. I've been buying some USB-C cables so I can plug projects in to power them. And I also thought it would be beneficial to have something like this. So it's a male to female pass through USB-C breakout board. So if it works the way I'm hoping, I can just put this in line with some USB-C connection and then I have access to all of these data and power pins, control signals. So especially if I start working on something that's going to generate different output voltage levels, I may want to be able to easily probe and make sure things are doing what I expect. And these packages are all related to one of these upcoming USB related designs. See if anything here is labeled. Not really. Max 3, 485 are these dip packages. So for making an RS-485 circuit, these will be 3.3 volt logic instead of 5 volt logic. So if I'm hooking up to a Raspberry Pi or something else, 3.3, instead of an old Arduino at 5, I can do this on the breadboard for prototyping. And when prototyping is finished, I have the Max 3 485 surface mount version for smaller PCBs. Then just the regular 5 volt Max 485 chip surface mount. I've already used these on PCBs, so I'm just restocking. I used these on a 5 volt AT Tiny. Then there's this one. This is an even smaller surface mount. I forget what it's called. Maybe MSOP instead of SOIC that says 340E on it. So that's a very tiny version of a CH340 USB to UART chip, but this one has a T now output. So it goes high when this is transmitting on the TTL UART. And so combining this with these MAX 485s, this can control the transmit or receive data direction needed for these 485 chips, where the regular CH340s don't have a pin that can tell you if you're currently transmitting or receiving in. So using all of these parts, I'm going to have a USB-C connector just running in USB 2 mode with data plus and minus. It will connect up to this CH340 USB to UART, and using the TNOW pin, I can get either 5 volt or 3.3 volt RS-485 communications to USB. So that's going to be an upcoming project. And something more general purpose, not really electronics, but useful for helping organize cabling. I bought a bunch of Velcro ties or whatever the non Velcro product name is for this. I think there's a hundred here, and the reason I bought a bunch of these, I'm still sorting through decades worth of collected electronic parts and all kinds of cables and wires, trying to figure out what I still need to keep. And if I am keeping it, I need a way to help bundle all these things up so they're not just all over the place. So I thought this should do it. And here's something I ordered because I'm always struggling to get the flux cleaned off of PCBs. So I thought it's about time I get some flux remover again. I haven't used this in several years. This is 945 milliliters. And the last time I used flux remover, it was in more of a spray can format with the straw, and it just had too much force to it. I could never really control where it's going. So I thought I'll get this, and it's cheaper, I think, in this format, at least when I was shopping. So I figured I can maybe dump some into the cap or whatever container. 
and just use a cleaning brush to target the area of the board I care about. So of course we would want to read all of the fine print, make sure we know how to use it, and then give it a try. So this would be one example of a board where the through-hole pins here have a mess on it, maybe over there as well, that I would want to try to clean off. Usually I've tried just even using a brush and alcohol or something. Nothing's ever worked. So I just put a whole bunch on here just to get a quick start. I'll try to clean this up. And it still looks hazy, but after trying to wipe away the flux, I think the uh, flux looks like it's mostly been removed, at least for a first try with aggressive brushing with this which I've now dedicated to flux remover. And that's another good application for all of these metallic sort of paint markers that I bought recently. So cleaning flux off to try to make the boards all shiny isn't something I'd want to do very often. It's only maybe certain instances where I might care to make it more presentable. Or maybe if I figure leaving flux on in some cases would actually interfere with performance or operation. Maybe then I would go through it. And speaking of things that generate hazardous fumes, I bought a solder fume extractor fan. It comes with an extra filter in addition to the one that's installed on it. So it's an AC fan, 0.25 amps, 3000 RPM. So there's probably not much point in doing a teardown. We can see right through it. The AC wiring here, it's all hidden by, I guess that's some sort of heat shrink. The ground wire looks like it's going to this screw here. So metal stuff's grounded. Wonder, if, is there any exposed metal I could double check? So where can I ground this? Oh, that'll do. So I'm able to find some exposed metal there. I'm getting continuity. So I need one of these and I considered different ones, including, well, this one in Canadian is about $40. So then you can pay over a hundred for basically the same thing, a fan similar to this and a filter similar to this. One of the more popular looking black framed ones with kind of a shroud that, that comes out and it sits up here and you can angle it. Those may be even further away from the surface. At least this is right there. So I looked up some reviews and I saw something that showed this one working and how it was actually better at pulling the fumes in than the more expensive ones. And I even considered some of those other ones with the box with the filter located elsewhere and you have this long flexible hose and you can just sort of aim it and target where you want. But I think really you need to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on that style to get a good one. So I settled on this. If I just have this sound meter here, so when talking and at this distance, a couple of feet from me, it's around 70 dBA, around 33 for room ambient. I'm just gonna lay this somewhere, put this a little bit away. So really it's not too much louder than speech. And now a good use for some of this experimentally purchased solder I've made over the years, just trying them out. Some of them that weren't very good. Maybe they're good enough at generating smoke. I'll try to get a different angle of this. So It's going straight into that fan. So if I go a little bit away, if I needed workspace, it's, it's hard to show, I think. It's still getting sucked straight toward the fan though, instead of going up so much to where I would be sitting above it. So yeah, if I change the camera angle toward where I'd be facing it right now, it's easier to see how it's going straight into that filter. So if I turn the fan off, 
do that again. Now it's just going up around everywhere it wants. And while we're looking here, I recently also bought this table clamping adjustable arm. Sometimes you see lamps like this, so it's got the springs on each piece and you can move it in or out. So this one has an attachment on it for a camera standard thread. And right now I just have a phone clamping thing. So I could put a phone here and put it overhead and film something overhead if I need. So down at the end, this one has the camera mount and you can of course adjust that up and down and then tighten it in position. And I have this older adjustable phone clip with the camera mount on it. So I could thread that on there and then just position this around. But I also bought this little ball joint sort of adjustable thing with a camera mount on it. So if I put the phone clip on here, now that's on this ball joint attachment, which has the camera threads here. Now I can do a lot more range of motion with this. I can put the phone in here to film below me, have it this direction or that direction, or pivot on angles, or go completely this side, go around that way, lock it into whatever position, and it stays. So that's right here. I can put that wherever I need, and when I'm done using it, it can just go vertical and it's off to the side, out of the way. So hopefully now with this fan, I can keep all of the toxic chemicals of all kinds away from me, make it a lot easier to work. And that's good because I have lots of projects, again, coming up with all these small surface mount parts. So if I have to physically get closer to the board when working on it, I'd like the smoke to go somewhere else. Thanks to Patreon and channel supporters for helping make all this possible.